Hello, folks. Welcome to another edition of The Whiskered Woodcarver. So excited that you're here with me today. Wherever you're watching from, uh, I would love for you guys to go over to jeffc.live. That will take you right to my Amazon storefront. That's where I'm going to be watching some of the comments and such uh, because uh, some of the stuff that, you know, I have people really interested in um, is, it the, is it right below where you can actually purchase it on Amazon. So uh, jump over to jeffc.live to check that out uh, because we're going to be talking about some cool stuff today. Uh, this is a great kind of uh, wood carving thing for beginners, like if you're just getting started. Like, so let, let me let me jump into it. Let me go to my overhead cam really quickly. We're gonna be talking about this book today. Uh, this is amazing. And once again, it's down below in my carousel uh, where you can actually see it. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, but it's it's a great, it's a great beginning book. In fact, what we're gonna, I'm gonna show you today is actually um, what my, this is what my daughter carved out of it. Look how cool this is. Isn't that awesome? It's like a, they call it a cutie cockroach. And it's a really, this is her first carving ever, which I think she did an amazing job in it. She gave, I had to go actually steal this from my dad uh, because she gave it to him for Christmas. And it says Ab's first carving and the date. So she did this. It's really pretty simple, but she got it out of this book, which is a really great resource. So we're going to carve this today because I want to show you how easy it is for anybody to get started carving. Uh, isn't it just the cutest little thing? I just think it's awesome. Uh, and she did it all by herself. Um, so, uh, we're going to, we're going to break that down and I'll showcase this for you guys here, but it's, it's from this book, Whisk it, <laughs> Quick Whittles, and it's got so many great things in it. I love this book. Um, I had the digital version and I actually went and got the, um, the hard copy just to show you guys, but it's got some really great stuff in here. I'm really going to try it like these stacking, uh, the stacking little, bears and uh, cats, um, dogs and cats. I mean, just there's just fun, whimsical stuff that's not too hard, but really uh, some great things to actually increase your wood carving skill. This caterpillar is really neat, but it comes with patterns for all this stuff. Uh, so it's a great book. Uh, some snowmen, you know, I'm a big fan of Christmas. I'm going to have to carve this Rolly Poly Santa because I think this is really, really awesome. But yeah, this is all in this book. And once again, you can find it on the carousel at jeffc.live down there. It's called uh, Quick Whittles by Sarah Baraclow, I think, Clue, I think. So um, yeah, check it out because it's really cool. And it's got some advanced stuff, but like, look at that cool, not so scary monster. Can't wait to try that. But if you go in this, oh my gosh, look how cute that is. Clyde the Cuddly Bear. So there's, and, and she teaches you some painting uh, techniques like the dry, bus, dry brush um, technique right there, which is very, very cool. So yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun to do, but, uh, we're going to get started in a bit with, um, the, the first one, which I think is really simple, which is, this is a cool one too. The ladybug wheelie. We have to do that one. She does a really good job with her eyes, but see in the back here, you've got all the patterns so you can actually take it out and, and carve these patterns. So the one like we're going to do today, that we have that my daughter did this QT cockroach is let me show you the, the thing that's interesting about this is we didn't have the size of wood that you need for this. So what we did is and she's got some great stuff about tool maintenance and safety and all and how to do different finishes. So it's just a really, really good book. So um, Make sure you guys check that out and support her because she does a great job. Because last week, you know, we carved. We're kind of doing beginning carving stuff. We did uh, some of these books, these little wooden books, which are fun to carve and pretty easy to do. So those are ones my dad did and gave my wife as a gift. And he got the idea from Doug Linker. So we did that in the last episode. You can check that out if you want to go check, uh, go back and look at the other one. But it's another beginning book one right here. So... The actually the size that the she recommends is five and a quarter by two and a half by three, and if you look at the pattern, you can tell it's it's this is way big. This is actual size. This is way bigger than what we did because Abby just did it from what we had lying around, and we had a one and a half by one and a half. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, you know, the, it's nice to have that pattern, but you can always shrink these patterns down and do them with the wood you have. If you have some scrap or you can't get a hold of a big piece or you just want to start with a little one, it's fine to do that too. So quick whittles. We're going to be doing this uh, cutie cockroach today. And uh, let's go ahead and get everything started as always. And she talks about this in her book. And once again, 
I have the scars to prove it. You want to make sure that you uh, <laughs> wear this glove. And I have somebody uh, going, hello, Jay. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you watching the show over on YouTube. Thank you for doing that. So we're going to go ahead and, and get this glove on. Once again, all these things are in my, if you go to jeffc.live, you'll see it down below in the product carousel where you can check these out. But this is a cut resistant glove. So it protects you from slices, not so much stabs. So you want to be careful of that. But um, I know you see a lot of those carvers on YouTube and, you know, God bless them. They've been doing it for a while. They've been great. I have cut myself, so I always wear this now no matter what. And I also wear this little leather thumb protector. You can see it's it's well used. And I wear this on the other hand because a lot of times I'll be, I'll be pulling the knife towards me and this just helps protect this as well. And I am left-handed, so if you are right-handed, you'd swap it up, but that's where we're gonna get started. Um, I also, we're, we're, I love my uh, flex cut knives. I've been using them for a long time. I have multiple ones. There's a great set that you can look at that's down below, once again, in the carousel at jeffc.live. You can find them there. But there's a great little three knife starter set, uh, very reasonable price, even comes with uh, a sharpening compound to keep your knife sh uh, sh you know, sharp. And as always, we're gonna start with that. I'm using a different, this is from Beavercraft. And this is kind of like a green crayon, but it's another kind of sharpening compound. Now, FlexCut uses the yellow one. Uh, but for this, I like I like this one for um, my little my little strop here, and it's really easy. And I always do it before before and after I carve, um, just to keep them straight. But that's just kind of my habit. I always like to have n nice knives when I start and when I finish. And I'm just gonna go, you know, kind of three or four times on one side, three or four times on the other, just like that. And you'll have some of it kind of flake off, that's okay. And for traveling, and it comes with a lot of my different tools, a lot of times you'll see FlexCut bundle these slip straps um, in with them. You can also buy them separately. They're great for travel, but they don't have a lot of extra space on them. So um, I kind of just, I like to have this long one for when I'm at home. So just do that a couple times to keep it sharp. And as you're carving, your knife will start to dull a little bit. And it's nice to just have this right there and just do a couple quick strops on it. And um, I'm just gonna polish it up on this other side that doesn't have any compound on it. Just kind of keep it nice and sharp. Just like this. And that's pretty much good to go. And this, is a very simple one. We probably won't get finished today because there's gonna be a lot of wood to take off, but you'll get the idea of this little cutie cockroach. And we'll probably, what we'll probably do is get most of the basic shape done today. And then we'll go in and uh, <laughs> Mark D Maker goes, may the edge be with you. Yes, and also with you, my friend. Thank you for stopping by <laughs> and tuning in. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to kind of rough this out. And the cool thing about this little cutie cockroach is if you can carve the shape of a potato, you're pretty much set. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Once again, this is smaller than what's actually in the book, but um, you'll, you'll get the idea. And let me find my pencil. And we'll just pretty much rough out a shape here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because mine won't. And you can see it's it's kind of tapered more at the ends and a little bit more blunt at the at the front but the cool thing about wood carving is it's yours so you can make it what you want it to be you can see it's just pretty much almost a just a potato shape right like that and that just gives you an idea and then you'll just start taking some of that wood off this was a great project for my daughter's first one because um, it, it, it is so simple. And she learned how to actually, and when we make these little edges inside of the uh, carapace, is the carapace, whatever the insects thing is, um, <laughs> it stop cuts. She learned how to do that, and then she learned how to drill, drill these little holes where we stuck the wire in. So it's just a great 
all around starter project to do. And when you're when you're first starting, you just want to slowly take some wood off. I like to kind of you can tell my it's sharp. And if you have a, you know, this is basswood which we're carving, and depending on the age and the grain and all sorts of stuff, sometimes it can be a little tough to carve. And I have a little solution, especially on the the end grain here, that I like to spray um, on these and let it kind of soak in for a little bit. And it's half water, half uh, rubbing alcohol. And that alcohol lets it penetrate in inside of the wood a little bit more. And uh, that kind of can help you on some of the, the tough spots that you may have. But so far, we're good. So I kind of like to get the basic shape at the top and then just continue to round down. Now, you could take this to a bandsaw and just, you know, take off some of that excess wood, which would probably be a good idea. But if you don't have a bandsaw, and you're just getting started. Um, just take take time as you're as you're carving, and do it in a couple of sittings. That's what my daughter did. She just uh, worked on this a couple of nights before Christmas, and just worked it out sitting at the table. Because if you've never carved before, this is a great <laughs> exercise as well to build up your the strength in your fingers and if you can tell i'm taking small cuts every time i'm doing it i'm not jabbing it in and really trying to rip it off and i have a pretty decent sized knife um you can see right here and so i'm not it's not a huge one it's, it's kind of a, a a medium kind of blade i would say because i have a lot bigger ones and it's a great size to take it off but you don't want to take off more wood than your blade can and you can see what i'm doing is i'm using my other thumb here and this thumb and kind of pivoting it, pivoting it so I have a little bit more, you know, push and traction while I'm going. So especially if you've never done this before, you're working with kids, you know, take some time and tell them you're not, in, it's not a rush. Part of the fun is just sitting here carving off little bits at a time as you're going, right? And that's another reason I thought it was a good idea to start with a small, a smaller size instead of the full size one that's in the book because there's less wood to take off for somebody who's just getting started. So you can tell here on the bottom, she left it flat, which is a great uh, thing to do, and we'll probably do the same. So we'll be kind of, you know, rounding it, rounding it down as we as we get uh, more wood taken off. So it's, it's nice to have a, a pa even if you don't use a pattern, having something like this where you can reference is really, 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 really nice. Um, like I said, I had to borrow this back from my dad because it's a gift. It's a uh, um, it's something he gave to her. All right, Danny says, hey, Jeff C., new to the stream, what got you into this hobby? So that's a great question, Danny. Thank you once again for stopping by on Facebook. Um, what got me into this is when I was a kid, we went to this place in Missouri called Silver Dollar City. My dad, our family, we went almost every year because it was kind of close, and we would go camping or we'd go there and just hang out. And we, there were the woodcarvers there. And it was funny because we never thought, like it was my dad and, and my sister and my mom, but we just never, we watched them. We liked to watch them because they were cool and they did really cool things. They did characters like this, um, some fun things like that. And uh, we always thought it was kind of out of reach because we thought like it was all it was super expensive. You had all these tools and da, 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 da. And really, you don't. And so when I was an adult, so I've been doing this now for probably... 
gosh, dad retired. So about 10, 15 years, something like that. And so, and it's off and on. I'll put it down for a while and then start back up. But that's how I got into it, was watching those guys. And then when dad retired, he started, we started doing some more woodworking. We've always done woodworking when I was growing up. I was in a lot of shop, but not any carving. But I've always liked woodworking. So that's kind of how I got it started and why I love the hobby. And then the amazing thing now is with technology, all these different YouTubers and people that when I was a kid, you really didn't have any access to unless you went to like a, a fair or you saw them carving somewhere else. Like not a lot of people around you carved. And uh, it's, sometimes, it's really hard sometimes to carve from a book. With, but with like video like we're doing now and streaming, there's just there's so many cool things you can learn. But that's how I got started is uh, dad retired and we decided to start doing it. He does it as well. Like he did these little books here. And so... Uh, yeah, he does a lot of stuff with the lathe, which I did in high school. He got a lathe. He does a lot of pin, creating pins and stuff like that. So, so right now, it's this is almost the fun part for me is just the relaxing part of taking wood off. Just like, you know, sitting around, you know, when you like when you're a kid carving sticks into you, find, you get get your first knife, and you carve a stick into a point. That kind of thing. And then uh, going on from there and being able to do this carving and being able to make gifts is pretty cool. Now I'm just kind of taking some of the edges off. So, top's looking good. You can tell here on this how it kind of, it's not a, she ha she made and you can make it e any way you want, but she had it little. It slopes up a little higher in the front, and then a a, a little slower slope towards in the back, which is pretty cool. So Danny says, "Awesome! It's a nice that this hobby grounds us and gets us the busy lives we create." Yes, exactly. Dan I, so I like it because I know I'm doing it in front of a screen right now, but usually I'm not in front of a screen. I'll sit out in the porch or somewhere else, and you can take this with you camping or in front of a fire. So yes, it's nice to have something that you do with your hands, especially if you're in the creative industry and um, it's, uh, you know, you feel like you're not, you're not creating anything but air. <laughs> so this is kind of fun to do. And it just started pouring here. So, and I'm in a metal building, so hopefully it won't be too loud. But I appreciate you stepping by, Danny. That's awesome. Do you have any hobbies, Danny, that you do that, uh, um, like you feel like is creative for you that you kind of something other than your job, like your job at a job that you do that's creative that you like to do. I'm always interested to learn what other people do for uh, fun. Oops. Kind of getting this to keep going over here. So what I'll probably do is round out most of the shape today, and I bet I don't get it done. Um, so you're actually into a little bit of gaming with my his kids. That's really cool. Let me take off this. So. Um, uh, he goes, I actually got into this a little bit gaming with my kids and he's noticed that, um, that allows me to focus on just one thing. He gives my ADD, ADHD mind a break. Yes, I get that totally. Um, what, so gaming, what, what, uh, platform do you like to game on Danny? Um, I have the, the steam deck cause I'm an old, um, PC gamer back in the day, you know, Wolfenstein, all those things, that's what got me probably into computers. And then um, started, I got the Steam Deck, which is like all my old games I could put on it. So I really like it. So what's your preferred platform? What do your, you and your kids like to game on? And I know Zelda just came out today or yesterday. So I know everybody's going to be playing that over the weekend. Oh, 
Mark, you have oh you have a YouTube channel where you teach it. I think I've seen your videos, Mark. Um, thank you for stopping by my my little uh, piddly channel. Uh, but I appreciate you stopping by. But I'm gonna have to go check out more of your stuff. What what do you like to carve the most, Mark? Uh, so Danny says he plays Fortnite and play a game called Stumble Guys. Oh, I haven't seen that one. So uh, yeah, it's a great way. My son. He's out of the house now, and we still talk about games. We had a rule. So we remember the Nintendo Wii when that came out. That was when they were little, came out. We had one of those, and it had to stay in the living room, so we played together as a family. So that was a lot of fun. Mark, feel free to drop in your uh, YouTube link in the comments because I want to make sure I go back and check out your channel. Yeah, I love the Wii, says Danny. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm shaking my, my camera. I don't want to do that too much. The bowling thing. We used to play Wii bowling a lot. So. Right. N64. Yeah, this what's so fun about the uh, the Steam Deck is it lets you has a lot of emulators on it, so you can play some of those old classic N sixty four games, which is a lot of fun and brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, Goldeneye, that was so much fun. Yes, I think I played that in college. Oh, so Mark says he's a he's been a bird carver for years. But now I'm getting into doing characters as well. That's awesome. So do you do like um, uh, duck decoys and that kind of thing? Because my uh, my wife's uncle carves those those birds and duck decoys. And I tell you what, they are so good that you think they were soft. The feathers, how he carves them, you think it's like real feathers. It looks like you could touch it and be really soft. And it's all of wood. And I am so impressed with you who make those lifelike uh, decoys and, and uh, birds. So I'd love to see your stuff, Mark. You should do this live. I'd love to watch you carve some stuff live. That would be really cool. Maybe you do that because you said you had a channel. So you can see here, it's it's not too tough. You're just making a big potato, really. And um, I'm taking my time, and it's also kind of hard to read comments and carve at the same time. But, yeah, it w you know, just take your time as you're doing this. And Start rounding it down a little bit more here. Hear that, how it changes the sound when you're doing that ingrain, how it's a little bit tougher and tighter to cut. And that's when you may want to spray some of this uh, solution on it, kind of get it soaking in there to help, to help get it a little bit softer. You can even hear it change a little bit doing that. All right, man. Thanks for stopping by, Danny. Appreciate it. So I... I for my, my other job, I do a lot of li a live video, Mark, and so it was kind of natural to do this, but it's a lot of, I like being able to interact with people while I'm doing it, um, but I want to go check out some of your your uh, your videos over on your channel. I think I may have seen them, but I just want to double check.
So, Mark, do you do it full time or is it just a hobby? Now I'm trying to just slowly round it down here at the top so I can have kind of the front right there of of the little character. Once again, this is from Quick Whittles. You see that at uh, right there. You can go down there and see it in my carousel. You can uh, grab. It's a great. There's so many cool things in there. see so uh mark on uh, for birds do you what kind of do you use multiple different types of wood do you like to use a certain kind of wood i don't know if it's different for i know a lot of people like to use cotton cotton wood cotton bark for stuff and then you know but is there a preferred i don't know wood that like bird carvers like to use getting there oh you occasionally compete yeah I haven't done that I think I don't think you know everybody's wanting to monetize everything and people have told me that I should do that and I'm just like I don't want it to be a job <laughs> I enjoy it and I still consider myself a very much a beginner I think there's always you know, I, I also like to try spoon carving. Um, there's so much stuff you can do. Um, and a lot of, so like Abby did such a good job. She really worked really hard and she didn't ever sand it, but she, she just really got, you know, like if you look at mine, you see how the big chunks out of there and it's just kind of a different style. I think for different people, some people really like to have the, where you can see the wood. Some people actually will sand their carvings down. I tend to like to be able to see the knife marks, but that's just me. Oh, Tupelo. Okay. Okay, so do you do do you use a rotary tool when you're doing your carving, or is it? I know some people only only hand tools. Some people are are a mixture of both. How do you like to do your carvings? This is why. I do, see, this is why I like doing live. Is I get to talk to people and ask questions. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see, make sure everything's working over here. All right, very cool. I work on the back a little bit. Every once in a while, my when my uh, I kind of feel like a catch on the knife. I'll just do this a couple couple times and this is a relatively new this is from Beavercraft this little strop and so I really I really like it just kind of over here polish it up
Man, time's flying. Hey, Katie. Thanks for stopping by. Yep, doing a little wood carving um, this afternoon. So Mark goes, uh, for you guys watching on other channels, he goes, he's a competition. He does, uh, oh, let me take this off. He's on competition birds, both broadcast and, why is this doing this? Let me fix this. Um, but he likes to use just the knife work to relax. So I'm going to send people to your channel, Mark, and let people uh, look at that. So uh, very, very cool. Yeah, so you know this is this is the what we're working on. This is my daughter's like first carving ever, Katie. Um, and yeah, if you can carve a potato, you can carve this. But it's a, a cutie cockroach, and it's from this book, Quick Whittles, that we're talking about today. But uh, yeah, so I mean, pretty much anybody could and carve this. I talked about um, when I was in Boy Scouts. I think before we started carving anything, we did soap carving. They gave us like wooden wooden tools. And we carved like dove soap. I think the first thing I ever carved was like a turtle out of ivory soap. So yeah, she did get, do a good job. For her first carving, I was really impressed. She is super, this is what she gave to grandpa for Christmas. I had to go steal it from his house uh, so I could show it today. And then that's what we're carving here. So yeah, she did a great job. But it's very relaxing. And like if you can carve a basic potato, you're doing pretty good. That's funny. You thought it was, I was peeling them. <laughs> so can you guys hear the music? I'm still trying to figure out the right balance for the music versus my uh, voice. So, uh, Katie, this is, um, I ordered this on Amazon. And if you go to this, like, you know, jeffc.live is where you can go there and see all my stuff as I'm carving live. Um, but this is basswood. And I, you can get different sizes of it. Um, there's some great places online you can get it. But it's really light. It's, it's really nice. Mark was telling me earlier he uses, uh, t uh, was it topo Tupelo? Yeah, wood. Um, but a lot of carvers use basswood. And that's what I've always kind of liked to use just because it's light and it's easy to paint. So, yeah. You can't hear the music. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Let me turn it up a little bit. It's hard to get the balance right. So. There we go. So we're just slowly starting to round that front down right here. And then, like, you can see here on the bottom, it's flat. And so we'll just continue to... I mean, you'll... you'll it's a great beginning project because you're really learning how it feels with different ways the grain runs, how you know how much pressure you need to go, and it's really forgiving. Like if you cut too much off the top, you can just have a stunted little bug. So it's not that big of a deal. And once again, this is the stuff I spray. See, it kind of changes the color of it. It's half water, half alcohol rubbing alcohol and um it helps that absorb into the wood it helps that where it's really that tight in grain helps you to cut that without really having to work too hard And later on, this is, like I said, a great project uh, because you'll learn how to do some stop cuts where those lines are um, around in kind of the shell of the cockroach. So, and then even painting is a great little, it's just a great little starter project all around. And she's got a ton of little really cool things. I, had, I hadn't seen this book until my daughter actually discovered it when she was looking, trying to figure out what to get grandpa for Christmas. And I've been really impressed with some of them in there. There's some really cute ones. Yeah. 
Where's my, I don't know why my table's bouncing so much. All right, we're going to carve for probably a couple more minutes. We kind of want to get that front, kind of the basic shape done. And I'll probably carve a little bit off camera, and then we'll come back for another. Sh I don't think I'll get to the actually making some of the details in it this session. And if you're starting this and your fingers get tired, your hands get tired, just... Take a break and walk away and, you know, just relax a little bit because it will get tired if you've never done it before. So we might cut up a little bit more here. Kind of, you see it kind of, it's kind of blunt here at the front, but it kind of rounds up around the chin. So we're going to do that a little bit. Just taking off a little pieces at a time. I don't know if you can hear that, but I love that sound. That I think that's so very soothing. So you can kind of see there. Still need to take a little bit more off the top here. around it and I'm constantly like moving and changing I know some people will go and like do all the front and then they'll move to the back I'm always like da 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 moving it all around Here it even goes up a little bit more in the the rear end of the cockroach. So and there is a pattern in this book that's really easy. You can put it out and on you can cut it out and put it on paper, trace around it, and then you could take even a bandsaw and cut it out. Um, but for a smaller piece like this one, we're just we're just kind of whittling whittling it away. Like I said, it's a great way to get used to the knife, get to the feel of the wood if you haven't carved before. And also I wanted to have something so it's not too intimidating. Like this is like, I, like Katie was saying, it's just a big potato. Not jumping straight to doing something like this, which can be, you know, a little bit overwhelming when you're first starting to carve. So something like this. And I like to, when I carve something, I usually do it two or three times till I feel comfortable with it. Like I don't know how many penguins I've cranked out. Like just because they're easy, I can sit there and do them. I mean, I think this is one of the first things I ever did. Because it's pretty much the no CMs where you don't have to worry about eyes are really, really nice to do or really easy or something simple like a snowman as well. So those kind of things to get your confidence up. And then, you know, because I've done carvings and, you know, I've sliced the nose off and like, OK, I guess it's got to be something else. So having those early successes when you're first starting, I think, is really key. Like I said, I feel like I am just a beginner. And I haven't tried rotary stuff yet, Mark. Um, I've, I've thought about it. There's some really cool stuff. Some, I, some of those power carving, uh, the guys who do those power carving, it's just amazing. Maybe someday.
There we go. Our potato is coming together. Abby was really stressing about the shape when she first started because you see the pictures, you want to look exactly like it. And that's the cool thing about carving. Everything is different. So mine is going to look different than hers and hers will look different than in the book. And that's, I think, the way it's supposed to be. All right, see what happened here? A lot of times this basswood, if you take too much of a chunk out of it, it'll split. So you can even see the grain right there how it does that. And that's really frustrating when you first start going, when you're first carving, it'll do that. Sometimes you can spray some stuff and it will help a little bit because it's kind of dry or the grain's running that way, but that's going to happen. And then if that starts doing it, if you bite too much, just kind of go the other way and you can clean that up. Since I've so early starting on this, this project, it's not that big a deal, but like when you're finishing up something, you're really getting down to the detail and that happens, it'd be really frustrating. So just take your time. If it starts doing it, go the other way. You can kind of clean that up or come to it as a, at a different angle so you're not going exactly with the grain and having that split like that. At least that's what I have found. Let's say you're doing this for uh, oh gifts to give. So a lot of times, like when I did with the with the Santa penguins, or I would I would carve out a bunch to a certain you know time and then go to the other one. So I would not be switching because on these I use like a V tool to go in and make little things on the on the fringe and on the top of the hat. And so what I would do is I'd do them all to a stage and then I would go and then I'd use all the tool and kind of batch it out. It's really nice when you're doing. Christmas gifts. In the same way when you're painting, I'll go and do all the red on the top of the hat on like 10 different penguins and I'll do the same thing. And so that can be nice when you're when you're trying to batch some stuff out. what's going on here. Make sure I didn't lose my stream. Oh, did I not? Why not? Just a second. Make sure I'm still... For some reason, I got cut off. Let me try it again. There we go. All right. For some reason, I got cut off from Amazon. So, I'll make sure that for some reason. There we go. There, it's working. All right. So if you're just joining us, we are doing quick whittles. This is a little cutie 
um, cockroach from this book, Quick Whittles, here on Amazon. So go to jeffc.live if you're watching somewhere else. Check out everything that uh, we're using to carve today. Very cool. We're getting there. We're getting there. I always like to hold it up and kind of look and see how it's looking. You can see I'm pushing with my with my thumb here, and one of the things is is I'll wear. I gotta go get these new gloves every oh, three or four months. So I'll wear a hole in there, and you can already see one starting to come from because uh, I push it so much with my knife. Push it against my knife. All right. Slowly getting there. Continue to kind of round off this back part. Once again, this is that half rubbing alcohol, half water. I just put on this to kind of soften the wood, especially on that end grain that gets really, really hard. So my Amazon stream started a little bit later because there's a hiccup, but uh, this is basswood for you guys watching over there. And I'm just using the flex cut knives that you can see in the in the uh, carousel there. But yeah, so we're, and it, this is such a good book, this whiskered, this uh, quick whittles where I'm getting this cutie um, cockroach idea from. And it's a great one to start for beginners. It's just really, really easy. When you're first going, it's okay to really take some wood off. You don't want to take too much that you're having to really like saw at it. You want to have enough that you can, but you can go a little bit faster than when you're doing detailed work. Sharpen this up just a little bit. This little beaver craft strop here. So I'm going to polish it up here on the other side. I like to do this at the very beginning and the very end, and then as I'm carving, as I'm going along to kind of I start feeling it kind of dull on me a little bit. There we go. It's like that. What's going on here? Thing is, you will make a lot of wood chips when you're doing this, when you're not cutting it out with a bandsaw. But I think it's kind of fun, and it builds up your muscles. So 
See, like I was talking about there, you can kind of see where it's starting to split, where that grain is running. So you just got to be really careful when you're starting to pull it up. You can see where it's, that grain is really straight and really dry right there. So sometimes that happens. I just put a little bit of this on, see if that helps a little bit. Maybe come at it at a different angle. So you see I've taken pretty much all the angles off the top for this and I'll continue to round it down because it's still got a long ways to go but you can see I'm starting to get there so we'll just continue to this ingrain here we need to really taper it down for the bottom part of the uh, of the little the little cockroach there I'm not a big fan of cockroaches but this is the first one my daughter picked to do, and so I think it turned out really well. So I just continue to take stuff off. This. Once again, these are the flex cut knives. I really like these because they wrap around your hand like this, and they're, they're easy to, to hold and, and get. You don't want a knife that's going to be sliding around. So I really like that. starting to really taper that back just taking little pieces at a time it's almost like you were sharpening one of those sticks when you were a kid you know I think we all did that at one point or in time that this here this part here at the, the the bottom slowly it's got that slow little slope on it that looks really really nice just little bits at a time and I just keep looking and turning it and saying oh I need to get more here I need to get more here This is a great one too if you're just getting going and need to build up your confidence. going along and you have a question feel free to enter it in the chat anywhere try to answer it the best I can still need to work on this here at the bottom This is the final product for you guys who are just joining us. This is the cutie cockroach. It smiles at you. That's what we're working on today. Get 
this before we stop. I want to get this better at the end here. Right now I'm trying to narrow that that back in, but I want it to be even as well. There we go. But I'm just when I'm stopping, I'm holding it out and like just kind of looking eyeballing it some real detailed pieces I know some people my dad has done this is taking calipers and like moved it from one to another make sure it's the right size on this kind of thing you're just it's just getting it uh, you know as best you can with your eye Seems like it's getting dull on me. So this is the Beavercraft um, strop, and this is the, the compound that comes with it right here. It's like a crayon almost, but it's actually a sharpening compound. You put a little bit on that, and then that helps you when you're, when you're sharpening your knives. Uh, actually takes a little bit of metal off of the edge. That's what keeps it sharp and honed in. So you're just kind of laying that metal back in alignment when you're doing that. I usually go like four, three or four on each side. And then I always go and kind of get that wood out of there, polish it on the other. I don't, I don't have any compound on this side. But I think that really helps as you're carving. When it starts to, it just, yeah, see it already cuts better just by doing a couple of those little strops. And I'm kind of doing a little bit of this to get some of those more of the wood out. I think we're we've been carving for about an hour so i think we're about done i kind of got the the basic shape done here like i said it's a potato pretty much i'm going to clean up some of this stuff on the on on this and then next time when we go we'll probably go and i'll show you how to do the the little details that we're going to put in to the actual cutie caterpillar once again this can be found all the stuff you can find in the carousel down below but this is really from this book quit quick wit quick whittles from Sarah 
Vera Clow, I think it's how you pronounce her name. And they have some great stuff inside of this, uh, this book. She's got things on how to paint it, the tools you'll need. And actually in the back, you have the patterns for everything that you need to uh, make these wood carvings with. As you can tell, I'm, this is the size it's supposed to be. And you can tell we have made this a lot smaller um, than what the actual size she has in here. So, that, I mean, you can do whatever you want with, you can shrink it down, you can make it bigger, whatever you need. But this is a really, really great book, especially for beginner carvers. It's got some great projects in there. None of them are really too hard, but they. she does a really great job of explaining them, you know, what tools to use. And uh, once again, the painting stuff, even the, the colors you'll need to finish it out. Like, look how cute that is. Just amazing. So, uh, thank you guys for joining me today on Whiskered Woodcarver. We'll do this again. We'll finish this project up, and we'll start on some other ones. Let me know what you'd like to uh, see carved or what to happen on the show at Whiskered Woodcarvers. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Once again, you guys can go to jeffc.live, and you can check out all the past episodes, all the live shows. But I appreciate you guys. I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.